Why come up with a new embroidery design when you can pilfer one from a medieval Welsh castle? Let's get cruel. And that's cruel, not cruel. Why is it called that? Uh, well, I looked up the etymology of the word and that gave me not much to go on. The most that I could find in my very limited research is that it might be related to the Old English word clue, which might refer to a ball of yarn. But what makes something cruel? That I can answer. Cruel is most often associated with or <laughs> assumed to be a specific design style of embroidery from the Jacobean era that features a lot of birds and flowers and leaves and most commonly a tree of life design. But actually it doesn't have anything to do with a specific style or design or combination of stitches. It's all about the materials. The definition of traditional cruel work or cruel embroidery is embroidery done with worsted wool, most commonly on linen. And that's it. It doesn't matter what stitches you do or what design you do. The reason it's so often assumed to be this specific design style is that cruel embroidery was most popular in England during the 17th and 18th centuries. You'll often hear it called Jacobean cruel work, but the Jacobean era was only 1605 to 1625. So honestly, I'm not sure why it's so associated with that one time period when it was really popular for hundreds of years and even carried over to New England where it was very commonly used. Maybe I'm assuming that that was like the peak of its popularity. Anyway, that's really enough history from me, a non-historian. So let me get to the point. I'm gonna make some cruel. There is an incredibly handy book available for free online from Project Gutenberg, which I will link in the description. It has patterns and drawings of original embroidery from hundreds of years ago, along with descriptions of what stitches and colors were used when they were able to find that, which is like amazing information. Stuff like this just, it warms my heart. I've actually sewn a couple of these patterns before, back when I first delved into cruel work and the sort of Jacobean style of embroidery. But right now I am in the middle of making a skirt and that's a whole other project video that will be coming out sometime later, I don't know. And I wanted to add some embroidery panels under the pockets on the front of the skirt. Now here's the deal. I really wanted to do this as legit as possible. Like the fabric is gonna be what the fabric is because it's a skirt I'm already making. It's not linen. It's just something that I found at Goodwill. But I wanted to actually use one of these traditional real designs of old and do it with wool yarn, which is something I haven't tried before. I even went and bought every shade of blue and green tapestry wool that I could find at Michael's. But this is the fabric. It's cheap, it's polyester, it is very tightly woven. I had trouble getting pins through it when I was trying to see what the pattern of the skirt would be. And I cannot sew with wool on this fabric. It would shred it to bits and make a giant mess and basically be pointless. So I am stepping back a bit. At least now I have wool and I can get myself a good piece of linen in the future and do this all over again properly. For now, this will be really good practice. So I'm gonna end up stitching with regular cotton embroidery floss and cotton pearl, which I think really imitates the size and texture of wool floss better. But I'm still doing the very old pattern. So I went through all of the plates trying to decide what would be the best pattern for this because it needs to be like two panels or strips of embroidery that are going right here on the fabric, not like just a random flower or leaf. There are two that kind of stood out to me. The first is this one, which is from the Tudor era, and that's about all the information they had on it. It kind of just stood out because it's already in a handy dandy panel. I'm leaning towards this one though, which is from a bed hanging at Powys Castle, owned by the Earl of Powys. Powys? Is that how you would say that? And let's pause for a moment to appreciate the fact that um, this is Powys Castle. It's in Wales. It has amazing gardens. I want to visit so bad. I saw a lot of incredible castles during my time in Scotland and England, but unfortunately I never made it over to Wales. So yeah, this place is going on my list. Anyway, they didn't really have any information on the date of this pattern itself or the bed hanging or anything. If I went to visit the castle, maybe they would have it there. Hmm, research trip? But the castle itself was built in the mid 13th century by a Welsh prince whose name I really should not butcher, but I'm gonna try anyway. Gruffud ap Gwynwynwyn. 
Side note, I'm pretty sure our family has Welsh roots on my mother's side. Could you tell from my fabulous pronunciation of that name? All that to say, I do think I'm gonna stick with this design, especially because they did have a few notes on the stitches and the colors that were used for this, so I can try to stick to those as well and be a little bit more authentic. Apparently it was done in four shades of wool floss, which is good because I have green and I think green would actually look really good on the sort of beigey fabric of the skirt. They mentioned that the outlines were done with rope stitch and that the big stems here with the sections in them were done in all four colors of green in Cretan stitch. Now, neither of those seems super viable, especially when I consider if I had done it in actual wool. Like, I don't know if rope stitch is something different for them than it is for me, but it's a fairly thick, line of stitches. And if you did that, even in cotton purl, it, it's gonna be pretty big. I think maybe it'll work for the contours. I mean, I'll make it work. But then Cretan stitch, like you can do it in a closed form. So it's more of a fill stitch, but it's not exactly a squared off shape. So I don't really know how they got it to fill up all of these little rectangles, much less like why. Why would you use Cretan stitch? Possibly the answer to my quandaries is that bed hangings are pretty big and the embroidery that went on them was also really big. Exhibit A and B. So I look at these patterns and imagine them being about the size I'm seeing on the screen, but no, they were actually quite huge, which makes sewing all of what looks like tiny details with a wool yarn actually work. But um, I'm kind of stuck on the size because again, it's a skirt. I can't make it any bigger than it is, but I'll do my best. I'm going to select the areas of this pattern that I wanna do so I can kind of get it into a panel shape. And then I must undergo the challenge of tracing it onto my fabric, which I have a feeling I won't be able to see through because in its previous life, it was a curtain and it's full of black threads. I am beginning to question the sanity and purpose of this project. Hmm. Okay, so I've run into the first of what I anticipate to be several challenges, namely that I now have to get my pattern onto the fabric. Overall, I'm really pleased with this. I'm really excited to sew it actually. I think it's gonna take me a pretty long time. <laughs> but yeah, I tested the fabric and as I suspected, it's curtain fabric and you can't see through it at all, period. There's a few options for how I could get this design traced on. None of them are ideal. I have this tracing paper, which works. I tested it on the fabric right there and it does show up on the fabric fine. My biggest concern is that it doesn't really come off afterwards. So this spot right here is where I tried to like rinse some out um, and it just kind of smeared around and made a blob. The other option would be tracing it onto some interfacing of some sort and using the interfacing on top of the fabric. And I've seen people do embroidery like this. I've never personally tried it because I've never had a need to really. I don't tend to sew on dark colored fabrics very much. So I gave that a little test here too. I just put a tiny piece on the fabric, sewed a few random stitches over it and then started tearing it away. The reason I don't like tear away stabilizer is because it doesn't actually tear that easily and it puts a lot of pressure on your embroidery stitches. So this is also not a great plan. But I do have one other idea that's going to take much longer because it'll involve another whole step of the process. If I trace onto the interfacing, put that on my fabric, and then basically go over the entire design 
with a thin running stitch. I can then go back and cut the tearaway stuff off very easily because there's very little holding it down and then use my outline stitches as my guide to actually fill in the pattern. In general, it just, it doesn't seem like a super easy cut and dry plan, but at the same time, I think it's the only way to get this pattern onto this fabric because I've basically just shot myself in the foot with this fabric. That's what I'm gonna go try. All right, I wanted to update again really quickly before the end of the day, because from here on out, I'm pretty much just gonna be sewing for a long time. This method that I thought maybe would work appears to be working. I was really concerned that I would need to recut out these panels of fabric because when I was cutting out, the skirt yesterday, I immediately forgot that I wasn't supposed to actually cut out the two panels that were getting embroidery on them. I was supposed to trace them onto fabric and leave all that extra fabric on the sides so that I could frame it properly. Luckily, this fabric is very non-stretch, so it's not a huge deal that it's not being pulled on all four sides. I think it'll be okay. Here's hoping. I won't bore you with the details. I guess cue all the time lapses because this is gonna be like a couple weeks of a project. Good times. All right, so I'm already kind of thinking this wasn't the greatest idea. <laughs> Big surprise. So all of yesterday was spent sewing the running stitch outline, which is fine. It's fine. You know what I'm wondering now? This interfacing that I was using is very holy. And at one point I was just putting it over my finger to like draw a line that I had missed on it and the pin marks went through onto my finger. So is there a possibility that I could have traced it onto the interfacing, put the interfacing on top of the fabric and then retraced over it on the fabric and the marks would have just gone through the interfacing onto the fabric? Hooray! Yay! I may have wasted hours and hours Oh well, this is how we live and learn. I'm gonna have to go test that right now because it's plaguing my brain. Time to find out if I wasted all my time. <sighs> Yo, it does. It does. It goes straight through. It creates a lovely, easy, nice line. I could have just done that. I could have just done that. I mean, what can I say? I'm always happy to figure something out. I wish I had figured it out before spending all of yesterday doing pointless things. This begs the question though, what do I do with this? Here's my thought. When in doubt, set it aside. So I am going to take this out of the frame, fold it up, and set it aside for a hot second, and then I'm gonna start over on the second panel. And then depending on how that process goes, how it turns out, I'll inform my decision on what I'm gonna do with this poor baby. 
For this next one, I also need to flip the pattern. Hi. Okay, let's go do stuff. Moment of truth. Ta-da! That's not bad at all. So that versus that. I'll take that. It was way faster. So basically I just did in like less than an hour what I spent about eight hours doing yesterday. Why? All right, so I got everything traced in here much better, made sure that you could see all the lines. I added all of the lines to the inside of the stems to turn it into blocks, which is, you know, exciting because I have to figure out how to put Crete and Stitch in there. So basically each of these squares is like alternating colors of green in Crete and Stitch done separately. The other stitch they gave me was rope stitch for all of the contours or outlines, which is all of these around the leaves. So those are the only two stitches that they gave me in the document. So the other ones I'm just gonna have to come up with and I wanna use ones that I've seen talked about on other plates so that it's kind of sticking in that world of the traditional cruel stitches. Stem stitch is a big one, so I'll probably use that on the stems themselves. For the round balls, I'm either going to do um, palestrina stitch or coral stitch. One of the things that's like a line of stitches with knots in it. And then for the thinner ones, I'll probably just do like a single stitch in the center and then do French knots around. The only other thing on here is these little curly cues, which I will just do in back stitch because what else would I use? All right, so that is basically it. Those are my colors. Those are the stitches that I'm gonna be using. Oh, let's get stitching. Oh God, I'm stuck. One down, one more to go. Actually, this didn't take too long comparatively. I haven't been able to devote long hours to it. So I think it only took me about a week to finish one panel, which isn't that bad. The green on the beige, I think is actually really nice. And the blocked out Cretan stitch, it really did work. And it's, it's pretty cool looking. I very quickly ran out of my pearl cotton floss because this takes quite a bit and I had less than one whole skein of each color. Had to go to two stores to get more of all three colors because of course, one store only had two of the colors. The other store only had two of the colors. Thank God that together they had all of them or I would have had to go to three stores. So I just bought a buttload. So there's no chance of me running out again. The weave actually wasn't a problem at all. What was a problem is how sheddy it is. This was giving me so much stress the entire time I was sewing. I was just watching more and more threads come further and further off the sides. <sighs> For the second one, I am going to cut out a fresh panel with extra bits of fabric right here so that it will sit fully in a frame and have plenty of room to shed because I'm not going through this again. Overall, it's looking good. So um, let's do it all again.
Ta-da! All right, my centuries-old kind of cruel embroidery is finished. I'm actually really pleased with it. The second panel did not take me as long as I thought it would to finish. I think I did it in the last four or five days. I debated for a while doing this panel in like the same color layout as the first one. Not so much on the stems because I knew I wasn't gonna get the exact same layout of all these little squares, but on the on the leaves, I didn't really know which one would look better, let's be honest. So I just went for it and made it different. And I kind of like it in the end because the panels are in opposition and then all the colors are shifted up, it kind of makes it look like it's not even the same design. So I think it'll look really good. I'm excited to see this in the finished skirt, which will be another video coming maybe in a week, maybe in two weeks. It'll be coming at some point soonish. Yeah, that's basically it for this video. I just wanted to show what Cruel is, what the process is, why it's different, and where I like to get my inspiration for it. I know this didn't turn out to really be cruel because I'm not using wool and it's not on linen, so it is not cruel. However, do we really have to be so picky about the labels? Ultimately though, it is still directly from a pattern that came from a bed hanging that is hundreds and hundreds of years old, which is really cool to recreate on something that I'm going to be able to wear nowadays. I don't know, maybe it's my little nerd self, but I find that very enjoyable, unique, and fun. Of course, by the time this video comes out, I will have turned this into a skirt. So insert footage of it all nicely sewn together into a skirt here. And come back next week or the next week or I don't know, just, just come back, just come back. There'll be another video soon. There'll be a video about making panel skirts without a pattern, which at this point in time, I haven't done yet. So we'll see how that goes. Thanks very much for watching and I will see y'all soon. Mm -hmm.